the very first next step is to pick a concept for your film festival. Um, there, if there is additional thinking, like the, um, the Zodiac one, you can do that. Just don't solely throw everything into the energy of pursuing one idea that's not fleshed out, right? Work on a couple things at the same time if there's still exploration to do. Or, like, say, eh, forget the Zodiac thing. I've already got this other idea. I'm running with it. Things not to think about. Don't worry about designing for your film festival. Right now, you're not the designer, you're the client. You're making and programming an event, and you would never program a film festival based off of what the graphic designer wanted to design around, right? You would never throw a concert, and the first thing you would do is go find a graphic designer and be like, we're not sure what genre of music, what do, what do you feel like designing for? Like that would be absurd. So don't think about that. Think about content right now, like the set of movies uh, and what you're excited about just on the level of would this be a cool thing to go to or a cool event to throw. Research, phase one. Objective, learn as much as you can about the subject matter. We are defining research broadly as reading, watching, and listening to materials related to your chosen films, genres, and other relevant areas of interest. At this point, you don't need to be looking at other graphic design as a form of research, though posters for your movies might be a good avenue to explore. But this is not like um, Pinterest-y, graphic design-y research. This is content research. Uh, research methodology. One, have a plan for how you will capture your research. Are you just gonna take pictures of everything with your phone? Like if you're reading something, you're just gonna take a picture of like the quote or whatever, which is totally fine. You can use notebooks, do you use Evernote? Resolve this quickly so that as soon as you start to do your research, you know how you're gonna capture this stuff or have multiple ways of capturing it. But make sure it's based in reality. Like if you never carry a notebook around and you hate writing stuff down, don't go buy a fancy notebook for documenting research. Like now is not the time to try to develop some new habit. Go with whatever is the most natural thing for you. So I always like saying don't do Pinterest, but of course you can bookmark anything on Pinterest. So if, if you're like a heavy Pinterest user, just make a board or a secret board or whatever for this film festival and just use that as a place to dump content and then, and then you can extract it later. But have something in place. Number two, Capture links and sources for everything. Don't think that you'll remember to get to it later. So like don't be opening up a million pages and like reading the entire thing and then being like, oh, that was a cool quote. I'll come back to that. Because like one, that's going to be the thing where Chrome or Safari or whatever is going to have that fatal error and you're going to lose the 72 tabs you have open. Uh, so like make it like whatever it is as frictionless as possible. This will be probably up tonight so you can like capture whatever you've lost later. Um, uh, you want to be friction free. Like it should be super natural for you to like read something and figure out how to move that to a place for later. Like I use Evernote because I can like use, there's a little clipper that just grabs articles and like throws them into notes. Similar to our genre ideation, it would be a good idea to write down everything you currently think about your micro genre and chosen movies. This list will provide keywords to Google if you get stuck or bored. So if you're trying to think about what to research and you're like trying to come up with ideas, if you have a list of everything you've kind of already thinking about, well then you can be like, oh, I'll research blackboards. Four, watch the films, make note of anything that is interesting to you. Quotes, images, or events, feel free to take pictures directly off the screen or screen grab them. So people get hung up on this one because they think that I'm telling them they'll have to use quotes later. But again, like this, the idea is a funnel, right? Tons of stuff at the top, the process, you will naturally slough things off, but you don't know where something cool or insightful is gonna come from. So it's like anything that's remotely intriguing to you. You might be doing movies about colors and then there's a quote from Napoleon Dynamite that has nothing to do with color, but the quote is interesting or like compelling, grab it. Like you don't know what you'll need later. If you think you know what you need later, 
then you need to shut off that part of your brain that's trying to tell you the future and focus on right now. Right now you need anything remotely interesting, regardless of whether it fits the narrowly slotted thing of Neil Young songs or whatever. But Conduct web searches, Wikipedia pages, and movie reviews are great places to start. Another avenue might be to do a search like name of movie interview, so like inception interviews, to find actors or the crew or whoever talking about it. Memes based on movies from your, or based on scenes from your films might be a good spot thing to look up. Follow any tangents that come up, like artists or other movies that were an influence. Like, you don't have to do anything but look at stuff. Right, like, so there's no excuse for not at least taking a minute to go up like the wrong avenue. Um, don't question whether anything is relevant beforehand. Uh, you know, like, if there's like a link, don't be like, oh, I don't know if I need to read that. You need to read it. Like, open it, at least read a paragraph, and then be like, ah, oh, whatever, I don't care about this. Um, and then don't concern yourself with what you think about the research yet. Uh, just do the research itself. The analysis comes later. So remember like what you're gonna end up doing this week is research and then you're gonna organize that research via the deck. Um, so presentation. Your job isn't to share your research with us since we don't have time to absorb it anyway. So much as to tell the story of your research. So. What did you look at? What did you read? What did you listen to? Uh, what thoughts of your own did you grab? Like, did you have some kind of insight into it? This might be the first couple slides. Might just be like this grand overview of like, here's the stuff I looked at, here's what I was reading, uh, here's what I was just initially thinking about, and then pull out highlights for us. What stuff excites you or piques your interest? Hint, if nothing excites you, do more research, or lower your standards for getting excited. Because almost anything can be exciting. How many pages this ends up being is up to you because you could make it 10 but only need to show us four, right? Like for your own sake, you might have a lot of stuff in there, but what you mostly show us is like the first two pages, like here's the kind of stuff I was doing, I watched the movies, here's some of the screen grabs I made, whatever. Like if there's eight pages following that, but there's one big thing per page that stands out to you, well, you can get through that really quickly and tell us about that. It's not like you necessarily have to do this hyper edit. Uh, like the day before, you could just simply have everything kind of organized and then just blow up a couple things and then be like, the big things are the things that um, stand out to me. And remember, like what matters is what stands out to you. Whatever piques my interest in your research is irrelevant. Like, I'm not designing it. Um, and I can tell you all day long, oh my God, this avenue is super interesting, but if it doesn't click with you, you're not gonna make good work based off that particular bit of research or insight anyway. So just go off of what piques your interest. Like, you need to show us what piques your interest just because like that makes an interesting presentation for us. You're gonna analyze it later, that's when you're really gonna look at like threads that might come through things. Like you might be doing the movies about color, but there might be a set of quotes from each movie that has nothing to do with the color, but it's this really cool overlapping aspect of them um, that may or may not become something a month from now. Um, so the whole point is like super open-minded you don't have to commit to really anything at this point, but as you're doing the research, just lots of stuff, and then make sure you give yourself some time to organize it. That might take a couple hours. Like, Don't underestimate how long it takes just to move text and images around to make them something that you can digest when you're looking at it, and then pull out a few tidbits for us. Because uh, in order for you to design something later, you have to have a clue about the content beyond the obvious. Um, like I want you to know it inside and out. Uh, and I want you to have unusual, potentially unusual insights. But I want you to be an expert on it is basically what it comes down to. So, and when it comes time to design, I want you to be able to do it from multiple angles. 
So it's entirely possible that when you end up designing, the research didn't figure into it at all because maybe what you end up designing around is just the genre of films that they are, which is totally fine, but maybe you don't and that's why it's important to do all this research now. Again, it's that thing that gives us confidence later. Like maybe you won't end up needing the research or maybe some little gem in there is gonna be the thing that unlocks the whole project for you. That's why we do it. So if I'm doing like the scientist one, mm -hmm. would I need to know those scientists really, really well? Would I would definitely research them. The yeah, but I think the thing is like, you don't necessarily need to go and read a biography of all of those people. Um, but research them enough to figure out like what's interesting about them or even like what's like utterly absurd about the situation. Like is there anything more absurd than what you already know in terms of uh, Albert Einstein uh, hooking up his granddaughter with his mechanic? His niece. Right? His niece, right? Um, like that's pretty absurd already, but maybe it's even more absurd because you're like, yeah, he never even lived in that part of like the world, you know? <laughs> And you don't know how that will fit into anything. So yeah, like just go down those, those avenues um, and don't question it. And the way that we're gonna work, if we're gonna do bed no diagrams, which is gonna be a way of dealing with a kind of non-conceptual approach that's more visual and more kind of iconic. It's conceptual, but it's not conceptual in the way that like um, you might have an idea where you're like, well, I wanna represent the gap between the reality of the scientist's life and the way they're portrayed in the movie and the way I'm gonna do that is by showing X, whatever that might be. That's a kind of a heady concept, right? Um, as opposed to a bed nose diagram concept might be silhouettes married against typography, which is like dead simple, almost not conceptual, we're gonna work so that both of those modes are being covered. So that, um, again, like I wanna be surprised by whatever it is you make. I want you to be surprised by whatever it is you make. Um, and I want everyone to kind of be in a position where you're doing stuff you've never done before, even if you scrap it all and, all, and you only use the heady conceptual stuff or you only use the more kind of iconic, like big idea stuff. But you need to do, you need to do research to do that anyway. I mean, it's ridiculous, but the five scientists, just having pictures of them is going to be helpful. Knowing their, what they did or whatever, like knowing where they lived, like that stuff is potentially important, might not be, but you don't lose anything by looking at it. If you spend a week reading a book about Leonardo da Vinci that's this thick, <laughs> yeah, that is a bad idea. Don't do that. Quantity over quality, I okay? Never. I would never. I'm just to discourage you. but. Um, in general, you can't do too much research. It's only bad if you go down one kind of rabbit hole exclusively. And you, by the week's end, you know everything about, I don't know, EpiPens, if it's the Allergy Film Festival, but you haven't researched any of the movies, not good, right? Like, you wanna look at lots of stuff, wide ranging, and, and be, let yourself be a skimmer, you know what I mean? Don't feel like you gotta like read every article to the end unless it's utterly fascinating. And then in the kind of mercenary side of things, we're not gonna make a process book, but you're gonna have this pretty amazing process presentation that's gonna build up week after week, which you might just be able to show that at, at portfolio reviews and job interviews. And even if that research doesn't fit in, when someone sees that you actually do research and your research isn't, going on Pinterest and just looking at cool shit that was trending. Cause like, that's a lot of people's process. No one on the planet cares about that. It is not interesting. If people are like, oh, you actually do research. That's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, this is interesting. Like, you know, it's like the, you show the process when the process is interesting. If the process isn't interesting, like, you know, don't show it. It's just more kind of anemic process. But one of the first ways to get past that kind of anemic process is build up the research phase that we always gloss over. Like, especially in school, right? Like, you get an assignment, it's always due in a week. 
which is not enough time to just do the research, never mind to research, to think about the research, to come up with concepts, and then to design something, like all of that is expected, is like folded down into one thing. Like I want you as much time as you can possibly afford to over the next week, don't worry about design, don't worry about what you think about that research, just look at as much stuff as possible. It will benefit you, whether it's immediately in the work or in this cool trail that you leave behind you, that's like part of the journey towards the end. Some of us have three movies per concept, some of us have 12. What is the optimal number? Uh, I think three to five is good. Probably three to four is like, like seems reasonable for a day. Three to four um, movies is what, is that what you're Yeah, but if you have 12 movies, I think you should, well, I mean, in theory, you could be like, it's a monthly event, or you could, look at a tighter, more concise edit and get it down to something that happens over the course of a day. If you have eight movies though, and you're like, it's gonna be a Saturday and a Sunday and I think it works like this, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop you. Um, so like, if you wanna brutally cut it down from 12 to three, go for it. If you wanna be mellow, get it down to 12 to eight and then decide it's a two day thing, totally okay. <laughs>